The post-war housing boom changed the nature of cities like Toronto, expanding them into the suburbs and well beyond. David Crombie was mayor of Ontario's capital city during the 1970s and has been a leading voice since on urban issues through roles like his time as CEO of the Canadian Urban Institute and as someone who's never been far from the civic life of this city. And he joins us now for more. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Uh, last week, we talked about the building of Toronto. Um, about five years ago, you were interviewed by the Toronto Star and you talked about Toronto as a region. This is what you had to say. If the city now has one big failing, says Crombie, it's an inability to see itself as the heart of a region, even of the golden horseshoe, rather than a city unto itself. Somehow we stop looking outward to neighboring municipalities, avoid, Crombie says, Queen's Park could help rectify by reinstating an office of the GTA to act as a clearinghouse for regional issues. Why must we stop looking at Toronto as a city unto itself? We don't have to stop. The city is unto itself. Um, but um, I think, again, history serves me at any rate, and I hope it serves others. We've always been a part of the region and understood that we were part of a region. So if I could take you to the 19th century. Please do. All right? In the 19th century, uh, when the railroads came in the 1850s. Well, let me even go for earlier. When we, when we started out in the early part of the 19th century, we were part of, uh, Toronto was part of what was known as the home district. So we were right from the beginning part of a region, all right, both legally uh, and geographically, and people understood it, and even economically. When the railroads came in the 1850s, um, it, 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 was the, it was the most incredible invention. We're used to it now, but it, it, it collapsed time and space like nothing ever before it. And what it did do was staple the region to Toronto, because all the, from the, in the 1850s right through to the 18, uh, 1870s and 80s, um, the, within about 30 years, the place was covered in rail emanating from Union Station area, okay? So we were, we were part of a region. That continued on until, as I mentioned last week, mm -hmm. that, that continued on until the, about the 1920s when we said we're not going to grow anymore, we're just going to be ourselves, and so we began to create these other municipalities. When when Metro was born by the province in 1953-54, um, we now had a metropolitan government that allowed us to have a region, the city in the middle, the region around it. And how do we work that, both in terms of economics and transportation, relationship with nature, all of those things. Mm -hmm. When the Harris government came in, one of the biggest issues of the time was the issue of amalgamation. And at that time, the city of Toronto was opposed to amalgamation, and some of the other municipalities were as well. But the thing, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but it's worth understanding because it was a big, big fight. Mm -hmm. But by that time, after 40 years, from 1953 to the 90s, there had been a centralization of, of, of the services, mm -hmm. all right? So that now Metro got bigger and bigger and bigger. It was actually bigger than Toronto in terms of either its services and its budget and so on. So maybe it was time, and I recommended they either have four cities or one city, okay? And, and, and they recommend, and, and they and they chose the one. It was a big fight, but one of the consequences that was not considered at the time is that we now had no sense of our own region anymore. What had been our region, the metropolitan area, mm -hmm. was now one city. So what was our? But this, the region continued to grow beyond Toronto. So what we had to do is try and figure out what's our relationship now with our new region. The government of the day, and to this day, the government, um, w w w to, to create a new region, they did not want to do. Anne Golden, for example, lovely lady, very smart, she recommended that we have a greater Toronto area, a, new, a bigger metro with 30 municipalities in it. Mm -hmm. Province did not accept that. Do you think it's a good idea? Um, I, I did not, mm -hmm. uh, although, I love her dearly, <laughs> still do, <laughs> and, and, but we disagreed on that. And, but what's and the reason, and the reason yeah. I mention that mm -hmm. is that for then, from, from, for the next number of years, we didn't actually figure out where our region was anymore. What's the name of it? And so actually the sense of region, which had been part of our history throughout, as I try to point out, mm -hmm. was now brought back by the McGuinty government, interesting enough, started by the Harris government because the Harris government allowed um, that there, there should be a saving of the Oak Ridges Moraine. And that negotiation of the Oak Ridges Moraine, which was the northern 
kind of geographical tier of the city, that a geophysical tier of the city, that began the sense of the reason that was in 2002. The McGinty government then said, we're going to have a green plan and we're going to have a growth plan. All right. And that, for the first time, was a reestablishment of what's the new region. And then they said, 10 years later, we need to review the Oak Bridges Moraine, the Green Plan, the Growth Plan, and the Niagara Escarpment Plan of, 18, of 1983. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to do that and made a recommendation that we understand what we, we put in print, what we now understand. And that is Toronto's region is no longer the GTA. It died without... Uh, without there being a no bit, mm -hmm. all right? The region is the greater golden horseshoe. Well, which, and, brings, and, which brings, up to, uh, brings us to the report that you chaired a few years ago. The report was called Planning for Health, Prosperity and Growth right. in the Greater Golden Horseshoe 2015 to 2041. Uh, we all call it the Crombie Report. <laughs> um, um, what do you think we can anticipate in the next 25 years for this region? I think the best way to think about it is that, as, as we did when we did the report, it was 87 recommendations and and it was a very technical one as well, not just advocacy of big thoughts. It was very technical in how to go about the implementation of those four plans. Um, so, the, but the simplest way to think about it is that what's gonna happen economically? What's gonna happen in terms of our relationship with nature? And what's gonna happen in relation to the nature of our community life? Right? Those are the three major lumps that has been part of our history throughout. What happens in those three things in each time in Toronto's history? What have we got in the future? We have an amazing change in our economy. The digital revolution, mm -hmm. the uh, artificial intelligence, all of that is transforming the way in which we see the, make, the production and distribution of goods and services and, and, and other kinds of technological change. So technological change is turning the economy into a wholly different, almost wholly different way in which we now see things. And it's changing the way work is done. What's the kind of job? It, 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 we talk about the gig economy, people not being able to have a, they have a precarious work life because the economy is changing. But it's also one which is very in tune with what's happening in the world. If you look at our relationship with nature, we have for some time now uh, understood. We didn't understand it in the 50s and 40s and where we, we just sort of polluted everything. But interesting enough, it's next year will be the 50th anniversary of Pollution Probe, which helped us begin to understand our relationship with nature, very much like our Aboriginal people did years and years ago, that we're part of nature, mm -hmm. that uh, we're, we're, uh, we're not only part of nature, but we, we need to see ourselves uh, as responsible in, re in relation to it. Finally, um, the, the, the community. One of the things we've done well now, there's lots of work to be done, mm -hmm. but we have done better than most places in the world, and that is dealing with cultural, ethnic, racial diversity. Have we got problems? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're now even going back and trying to solve problems with Indigenous people that we decided to forget 150 years ago. So we got, I would not argue we've, we solved everything. We have not. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we've done a really good job in, in, in trying to figure out how we get people of diversity to live together and produce together. And I came across a line the other day that just was perfect. What and was it, it said, what's the, someone said, what's the, what's the difference between integration and, and, and acceptance? Uh, integration is being asked to the party, right? Acceptance is being asked to dance, mm. right? And, there, and I think we've, we've moved in the next number of years, we will be f finding new ways in which we work with differences and how we make sure that that diversity continues to function. So let me sum it up by saying, if you look at the economy, mm -hmm. we have tremendous opportunities. Education is really important, all of that, but we have to find ways in which we deal with services that people cannot necessarily afford by their incomes alone. So there's a role for government that we have to rethink, okay? and we're starting to do that. Well, one of the services that I think if we're, we're living in the region, I live in Mississauga, okay. so I take a 
two transit systems. I take um, the GO and I take the TTC, and it's pretty expensive. But as the region grows, there's been stories of people moving as far as Brantford, Ontario, and yep. they have to commute every day. Um, in your report, you did recommend investing in more transit and high-density housing in the region. Uh, the report is three years old, and these issues were also topics that came up in the past provincial election. Do you think that the government took those recommendations in stride? Yes, the government issued a report uh, within a year after we did it, so almost about two years ago, a year and a half to two years ago, um, where they, they accepted almost all of our recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have now established or re-established with a new mandate uh, the, the Greater Golden Horseshoe Council, what, uh, right, it's called the Greenbelt Council. And I, I, they asked me to chair that. Well, um, Steve Pakin, um, uh, my colleague, has said that you're known as an honest broker and you're invited by many different governments to give your opinions on different things. Um, why is that? What do you get out of uh, doing public service? I, um, I, I've been at it in one way or another. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I, I became a teacher. I taught at Ryerson uh, for many years. I was director of student services there. Uh, but even my whole life, my parents were interested in it. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters were all teachers and involved in one way or another. Uh, in, in public service, it's like breathing to me. So I enjoy it. One of the things that I, that I get out of, a kick out of, um, is, 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 is maybe if I was more mechanically minded, I'd be a, a, an engineer, but I'm <laughs> not. But there are ways in which people can, need to get together, and it's the bringing them together that makes the cake. And if you can't do that, you find a lot of waste, you find a lot of people hurt. So I think that bringing th people together with points of view um, that you can listen to. Listening is the most important part. Uh, and then you find a sweet spot that brings them together. Well, just to go back to the transit question, uh, when transit planners were, you know, uh, planning back Toronto in the 40s, 50s, and even 60s, did they think that there would be a one, one day when we would have to make sure that we connect to places like Mississauga, Pickering, Aurora, or even Hamilton? If you live in Scarborough, yeah. it still takes people an hour and a half to oh. get to Toronto. So if you do live like in Pickering or Oshawa or whatever, it is even longer. Do you think that there's been a bit of a short sightedness for oh, no, no doubt about it. The two areas where we have not done well, I talked earlier about ecology and, 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 and being able to deal with human diversity, mm -hmm. I think, which I think we've done reasonably well and, and, and still working at it. The two areas where you've not done well uh, in the last 20 years has been in affordable housing mm -hmm. and in public transit. And it's, not, and it's not, not a mystery as to why. It's because we ceased to invest. All public services need to be reimagined, reinvented, and reinvested in. What we chose to do was worry more about, well, people said, we're going to freeze taxes. I'm going to tell you, anybody tells me that they're going to freeze my taxes, I'd say, would you kind of explain which services you're going to cut? Because that's what they're going to do. Or what services you're not now going to expand for a new generation. So what we did was not invest in public transit. What we did was not invest in affordable housing. I live down by, uh, by St. Lawrence neighborhood. That was the largest single development in Toronto, in Canadian history at one time for 10,000 people, affordable housing through co-ops, okay? Now, we need that kind of approach again for affordable housing, and we need to have m far more investment in public transit. And, it, and, I, and I think both of those requires a stronger role by the province of Ontario. Do you think we can make up for the time that we've lost? Because you mentioned that Toronto is the hub, where a lot of the economy is happening in the city, but a lot of people now are living further away and they have to come back in. Do you think we can make up for all that delay? Oh, that sure. We've had? Part yeah. of it also is to, to, to have uh, what we call complete communities where people can live, work, and play out, 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 outside of Toronto as well. So it's not just all on coming to Toronto. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, there are lots of people who say, I'd like to live in Barrie. Mm -hmm. I'd like to live in name a place. And why should I be able to get some work? It's what, what, what I think is that we have a tremendous amount of, of now communications technology. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we still assume that people have to come to one spot 40 hours a week. Why can't people just communicate and, 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 and have a coffee three times a week, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've not used our technology in terms of communication because we're now going to live in a different world. If you get off the plane in Newark, there's a sign right off the plane in Newark that says, in the future, 
uh, in the 21st century, uh, we won't be transporting, we'll be transmitting, okay? And so I'm saying there's technological advances and opportunities which will also deal with the traffic that comes. There's no reason why thousands and thousands of people have to come to one spot when you can actually communicate in a variety of different other ways. Well, you mentioned housing alongside with transit. Yes. Um, how much uh, affordable housing do you think the region is going to need by the end of the report that you have for 2041? Well, we, 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 I've forgotten the number we use, but we try to project it. Um, it, it it's just, we have, if we started today and kept working every day for the next 25 years, we may have, we may be still a bit short. We're going to need it. It's not just the amount of housing, mm -hmm. but it's the affordability of it. Right? And that's why we need to make sure we've got federal and provincial governments who are participating. When we did affordable housing before, we had, we had contribution from the federal and provincial governments which allowed us to make it affordable. We need far more of that. And there needs to be far more community involvement by churches, by unions, by ethnic groups, and all those other people, actors in social society. Well, you're, you're a politician. You've uh, worked with politicians. And sometimes th these things take a long time. But for people who are living the daily lives, um, it might take too long for that to happen for them. So do you see the region getting bigger and even expanding to as far as, I don't know, London, Ontario? Well, because people just can't well, afford well, to live in this region. Our whole thing is to try and stop the sprawl, mm. right? So is it going to get bigger? Yes, we're going. We're now, the Greater Golden Horseshoe is now 9.5 million people. It will go to 13.5 million people by 2041. That's a 50% increase in people. Now, that, uh, if you keep on expanding and expanding horizontally, mm -hmm. you are going to be out to London, Ontario, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and no farming. Uh, so... What you need to do is have more intensification mm -hmm. in, in, in some areas. doesn't mean you get rid of single-family dwelling housings, mm -hmm. but it does mean that we need to have people living closer together. It needs to be tra with transit and employment. Well, let's talk about lessons. Um, what lessons can we take from the city building that occurred in the post-war years to take on building this expanding region? I, th I think for, for the first, it may sound corny, mm -hmm. but... Like, and maybe I'm reflecting my own generation's uh, mm -hmm. uh, way which we at, went at it. There, there needs to be, first of all, not a fear, right? A not fear a of what? A fear of the future, right? There, I, I detect more fear of the future than, 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 than I've, I've been used to in the city. Don't you think it's warranted, and, and, though? And, uh, no. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the people of the 40s had a war, mm -hmm. and they had a depression. They didn't have the same kind of fear. Mm -hmm. I think we're... We're, uh, we, we need to, first of all, uh, say, look, we've got this tremendous opportunity here, and all we need to do is put some energy and imagination and investment into it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need to be able to use the, the skills that we have. To, to have. The land development industry that we have is absolutely splendid. They're really talented people. You need to have a combination of private sector, public sector, and community involvement to both not only deal with the economy, but more importantly as well, deal with the public services that we require, okay? Mm -hmm. Building the public realm, building those public services are the way in which people can have equality of opportunity and security at the same time. And finally, uh, what are the mistakes that we should avoid? I, I guess the, the, the one I really want is a kind of negativism that you cannot do it, right? They're, I'm not just being phony gung-ho. Mm -hmm. There, there's a, if you bring an attitude that we're not going to be able to do much, then the chances of you not doing much are pretty good. If you really want to connect with other people and build something, you can do I think that's what we've learned, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I only, there are very specific changes that we've got to make, but those are, those are possible. And in our report, we, we made the argument very strongly in practical ways. This is a detailed, practical way in which to approach it. It's all there. Okay? We just need people to believe it's possible. If you believe it's possible, you'll work harder to get it. And a little birdie told me that you're working on a book. And I'm sorry, crew, I'm going to have to take one more minute um, because I cannot... You're somebody who's done so much great things, so many great things for Toronto and the province. Um, I wanted to ask you one more question. Yeah. What would, your, what would you like your legacy to be? Oh, I want my, uh, my kids, my grandchildren, and now my great-granddaughter uh, to live the kind of life that I've been able to live. This Toronto is a gift. Uh, and like all good gifts, it needs to be 
uh, cared for and, 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 and supported. And so I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything other than, I've got what I need already. Mm -hmm. I've got a family I love and I have, uh, I've got my health mm -hmm. and uh, I get to talk to people like you. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you can come back when your book comes out. Thank you so much, Mr. Crombie. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. The Agenda with Steve Bacon is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.